Dana, dit is maar betrekkelijk onlangs dat jij permanent bij ons springbokspan aangesluit het. Maar als ik zo so dier die oude SIK radio bulletins kijk, zie ik jouw naam bij een hele paar programma. Bijvoorbeeld Loot Landroster. Wie was hij? Of was het dat jij dan? Hm. Ja, Loot Landroster uh, was ik geweest, maar het was helemaal een ander karakter. Oh. Uh, die ouwe was Loot Landroster was zo'n so breedsprakige ouwe was, amper zo'n so kaspaas type. Wereldwijs is automatisch die voorzitter van alle vergaderings. En hij neemt groot volksbesluiten. En samen met hij hij bij een ratspan gehad. Dirkman, Dirk, Dirk was die tussenganger geweest, die secretaris. En die man wat geniepsige dingen hier en altijd de dingen aan die gang gezet het, weet. En dan die derde bij interessante figuur was uh, Davy geweest. Davy was die Engels sprekende manneke wat uh, Afrikaans geleerd. Maar bij Skellum hoor, hij heeft altijd die uh, vernuf gehad om die verkeerde woord <laughs> op je rechte plek, op je rechte woord, op je verkeerde plek te zijn. <laughs> en toen je programma verkoop is aan Springbok Radio in 1950, was het geweest, ik zelf als Loer Landroster, Henny Trieter als Dirk en Klein Pulkie Vizier was Klein Davy geweest. Het was een wonderlijke ervaring geweest destijds. Die borgen, die adverteerders, hadden het in Kapstad gezet. En gereeld één keer een maand het was speciaal gevlieg Palmiet van Duin toe om naar die opnames te komen luisteren. En uh, bij die geleentheid is die gouden en zilver kopjes van die raad uitgehaald en ons het uh, soos groot directeur saam gesit en drink ons speelertjes. Uh, John van den Berg, die schrijver, en als ik aan Lord Landros te denk, uh, dan denk ik altijd aan daar die teksten wat nog pap net half onder die rolmachine uitgekomen het, half klaar en altijd oorhaastig, maar hulle was daar geweest. Groot ouwe Morris, Ons sê baie dankie vir oom John, alle wereld, wie sal ooit die prachtige reeks van hom vergeet, rustplek langs die pad. En uh, Elwin, hier is nog een man, wat daarom self sy merk gemaakt het, in die vroege Afrikaanse humor, Jan Poel. Waar is hy, waar is hy staan nader, Jan, of is jy nie Jan Poel nie? Nee, ek is een Piet Skaafkop van Box en Sterk. <laughs> Wacht, ga ik hier nou, ga je dan met jullie knoppen jaren terug. Jan, dit was mos en wat een reeks. Oeh, uh, Colgate Capriole. Colgate Capriole, dat is recht, ja. Ik weet niet meer wat er jaar niet. Ik denk dat was 1961. 61. Daar rond. Twee, Wie het allemaal daar een deel geneemd? Kan je nog onthou? Uh, Happy Amman. Ja. Gert van den Berg. Marie Chaden. Um, Brami was die uh, regisseur geweest, Brami Tennyson. Frederik Burgers, meen ik het ook in die... Een mm, stuk van deel geneem. Mm, en uh, ek denk die orkest was Benny Foster met, nee, uh, Benny Foster was die sanger, was die sanger. Leon Venter was die orkestleier. Ja, dat is recht. Van is het van die goed geskryf, Van is eruit maak. Dat is recht, dat is recht. Ek kan nie onthou of hy allemaal geskryf het nie, maar uh, heel wat daar van elk geval. En dat is die Piet Skaapkop van Boksing. Ja. Dit was recht, ja maar. Ek was eerst van die kerk, maar dit was met my eerste vrou. <laughs> Je ziet, ik blijf bij mijn pa en ma, en net oorkant ons daar blijf mijn nooi, Susara. En mijn perd Susara staan hier bij toe aan een parkeermeter vastgemaakt. Ik is reeds zo so bang, die spiras gaan mij vangen, want Susara het niet een rooi lichtje aan haar ster. En je weet, daar op box en ster, daar voel nog een ander meisje ook. Haar naam is Letty Anders. Zij is zo so mooi, dat lijkt alsof zij zo so in een rok en geskink is. <lacht> maar net op een tijdplek loopt zij zo so een beetje oor. Ik <lacht> heb van Letty een katvel jaspercent gegeven. <lacht> Moet niet van Susara daarvan zijn, nie hoor. Maar die eerste keer toen zij daar jas aantrek, toen jaag je onder haar in een boom. <lacht> Je weet, en die nooi van mij, Susara, zij is nou niet juist mooi nie, je weet. Sy kyk so oor mekaar, as sy nou laas my sit aan die tafel, dan eet sy al die kos uit my boord. <lacht> en as sy heel aan loop die trane by haar rug af. <lacht> en dan draas sy nog haar tanden buitenkant aan mond, as het reent haar, reent haar tanden nat,
Now I'm going to talk to one of my very, very favorite people. I always called him Paddlykins, with much affection, I must tell you. But he's better known, of course, as Paddy O'Byrne. And Paddy, by way of historical background, where were you on the 1st of May, 1950? Oh, much too young to broadcast on the wireless, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, I was still in that other republic whose rugby players wear green jerseys, you know? No, I don't know all that well. I thought only one famous team wore green jerseys. However, we'll believe you, Paddy. Anyway, to get back to business, when did you make your debut on um, Springer's? Springer's? You realise that word is copyright, don't you? <laughs> all right. Well, now, after I won the first South African Open Posh Talking Championship, that was at the beginning of 1961, I did a round of guest appearances on programmes like In Town Tonight, Nice Work, and... Um, Mike Silver's Sunday Night Music Hall show with Nico Carstens. I can't tell you the full name of that one. There's a conchological trademark in there. Well, that word mark leads me to my next question, Paddy. Uh, of course, no place to hide came in somewhere, didn't it? Oh, yes. The huskiest Mark Saxon of all. And 21, Laughing, Deadline Thursday Night, Sports Quiz, The World at 7pm. Plus various programmes selling paint. And let's not forget the Sari Awards. Elwyn, how could I forget that? After all, it brought us together. Love to Chris, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, and love to your family from us, too. Anyway, Paddy, the point is, Springer's got on without you for its first 11 years. Then it's 23rd and 24th. Right. Mind you, it's not the same over here. Can you imagine? No curry cup, no biltong, and no squaddies. Oh. But look, Elle, I'm beginning to hog time, and I'm probably overrunning, so... Put away your stopwatch while I say me verses. <clears throat> 1950, 1st of May, super special wireless day. All the microphonic lads fortified themselves with ads. Ads for stompies, ads for beer, ads for every kind of gear. Ads in English, en ural, flitzer, in die muttertal. Programs too, may I point out, which without the slightest doubt brought the listeners in en masse. Lecker content, lecker cas. Millions tuned in every day to each quiz, each full-length play. And the same is true, me dears, after five and twenty years. And although I can't be there, live upon the Springbok air, will you raise a glass of wine on behalf of me and mine when you toast with pride and glee Springer's Silver Jubilee? Paddy, we will indeed. We love you. And bye for now. Another new form of radio entertainment which Springbok Radio brought to listeners in 1950 was the daily serial for women. From Australia came dozens of these programs. Rosemary, Dr. Mack, The Story of Mary Lane, and Dr. Paul, to name but a few of the early successes on Springbok Radio. But in no time at all, the South African authors started tapping out their own serials for us. A leader in the field was Delphine Lethbridge, the doughty doyen of Durban, with a long-running, heart-rending and heart-warming story from Crystal with Love. A favourite Durban lady and also one of the first voices on Springbok Radio, Midge Doherty, went to interview Delphine in her study, especially for this occasion. One of the longest-running locally written serials was from Crystal with Love, and I'm lucky enough to be here in the home of the author herself, Delphine Lethbridge. Delphine, how many episodes were there? Well, um, 2,000 episodes, half hours. Um, it ran for eight years. And um, I killed three typewriters in the process. And people calculate, who are interested in that sort of thing, that I must have written about two million words. Now, we hear so much about ghostwriters and things. Did you actually write every single episode yourself? Every single episode, every word. And what was your best writing time? Early morning, about four o'clock. And by the time ten o'clock came, I was exhausted. And did you have your characters actually formulated in your mind before you wrote? Oh, yes, but you know, they developed as time went on. I don't think anybody remains static as a character, and these people started, some of them, as terrors, and some of them um, charming, and they changed as time went and circumstances went on. And did you have all the characters that were there in the beginning, did they last through the serial? Oh, yes. Um, 
Uh, in the first episode, um, there were about four, and they ran for eight years. And, of course, you were in it as well. Yes, I Mitch. was, indeed. I was. <laughs> Let me hear Tara again. Oh, yes, I was Tara. <laughs> That's right. What about her uh, voice? Oh, it's going back a bit, but still. Um, I shall look in my crystal ball, dear, and my goodness me, I see a fortune for you. <laughs> oh, bless you for that, Tara. <laughs> Delphine, I believe you have a recording of the first episode of Crystal with Love. That's right, yes. Um, in this... Uh, you'll hear the voices of Yolan Dotman as Crystal and uh, Merle Wayne as Lise. And I wonder how many listeners remember this. Hello, Lisa. Oh, Crystal, it's good to see you. And, well, they've told me about the job. They, they said you want me back. But of course, we can't do without you. Oh, I hope I can manage. I, I hope I'm going to be all right. Sometimes I, I get a bit confused. You must understand that, Crystal. They say it'll pass in time, but while it lasts, I, I feel helpless. Oh, you mustn't worry about anything, Lisa. There isn't much for you to do, just um, or just the usual routine stuff. Oh, but we've missed you. It's going to be so good for all of us. Also from Durban came Springbok's first half-million peak-time listening program, pick a box and the presenter, whose name became synonymous with the early days of the program, Jack pick a box Bryant. Oh, it started a long time ago where everybody in those days was looking to um, make a program for Springbok Radio. When was the show actually first broadcast? Uh, the program as we knew it then was first broadcast towards the end of 53 and the beginning of 54. Who else was on the show at that time? Well, the chaps that were there are still around. Um, Kim Shippey and Peter Broomfield, two very good friends of mine even today. And we worked extremely well as a team. In fact, that was a secret of the program, the fact that it was a team effort. Let's have a snatch of uh, Can You Take It? Mr. Philip Duplessis was a good performer and a very good loser, don't you, audience? Yeah! Well, we're not going to send you away empty-handed. We've got what you might say a consolation prize. And, and believe me, it's going to give you a lot of consolation. So bring it on, Kim, a great big soft slushy chocolate cream cake. Here it is, here it is, look at that. <laughs> now, Philip, you could take that cake home with you and eat it. Couldn't you? I can. On the other hand, um, don't think I'm trying to influence you, old chap, but yeah. um, Paul Crobler did say some pretty rotten things about you, didn't he? He certainly did. And he has done you out of the big, big prize, hasn't he? I got it ready. I got the cake ready. Now, what would you like to do with that cake? I tell you! £25, the money or the box? Box? £30, the money or the box? You want the box? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? 30 pound and money or the box? The box. She wants the box. He doesn't want the money. All right, Rose, you've got the box. Here it is. Open up and tell them what you've won. A packet of pipe cleaners. A packet of pipe cleaners. Thank you very much. Dan Hill and the orchestra's being played with Kunstnaas Jimmy Reisen and Julia Mann on a Travis Parade for the set with romantic and workshop numbers out the fifty years. Skip me up, Dan. Ver in the old Kalahari, there sing the boeren so. Give us the old Kalahari, the old Kalahari boer. Weetle die eindloze vlaktes, kameel door een boom en zand. Eenzame, vreedzame wereld, dit is ons Kalahari land. Zon bezig zing in jou bosse, die hutte gezond te versmaai. 
Rui Afrikaner osse, sien jy om elke draai. Ver in die ou Kalahari, tot daar in die Moelepoel. Gee ons die ou Kalahari, die ou Kalahari poel. source of cereals and slapstick, but also started rivaling Cape Town in supplying laughter and fun over Springbok Radio's airwaves. Tom Meehan's shows have given and continue to give a great deal of pleasure to Springbok Radio audiences. Tom, I imagine uh, that uh, they've given you a lot of personal enjoyment too. Enjoyment, did you say? <laughs> That's an understatement. There can't be many people in this world who've gained so much pleasure and satisfaction from their careers as I have. I think that's because I've had the opportunity to participate in so many aspects of broadcasting on Springbuck Radio. Yes, looking right back to that first big occasion when the breweries asked me to be the commentator for the second world title fight between Vic Towiel and Jimmy Carruthers. That's a long time ago, isn't it? 24 years. There was 10 rounds of suspense and despair for Towiel fans and 10 rounds of mixed excitement and agony for me because boxing wasn't really my business. Another era in my broadcasting life, the era of comedy. <laughs> Well, what do you know? What? There are less than 300 shopping days to Christmas. Well, that's just as well. It'll take me that long to clear up the mess in the last one. Hmm. And for me to pay for it. Mm. And for you to lose the spare tyre you put on through eating too much. What? What spare tyre? The one you rest your elbows on when you're sitting in a chair without arms. <laughs> Nonsense. You're imagining things. Sam. I'm your wife, remember? Mm. I'm the girl who used to put her arms round your waist when we went for a ride on your motorbike. So? So I'd need grappling irons to hold on to these days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I admit I let myself go of it over Christmas and the New Year, and that uh, might be a little, well, <laughs> fullness about me as a result. But, um... Fullness, he says. A barrel full. <laughs> I'm still not ready to enter a sideshow. I'm a little... Fat. Chubby. Gross. Perhaps a little tubby. Sam, you're huge. <laughs> 
All right, so you've had to let my trousers out a couple of inches. I mean, every man of my build tends to put on a bit over Christmas. I know that, Sam, but they don't all have to slide the car seat back so they can get behind the steering wheel. <laughs> There are many programmes on Springbok Radio today which started in the early 50s. One thinks of titles such as Lux Radio Theatre, which opened for the first time on the first night of Springbok Radio's existence, and the ever-popular Women's Forum, which even preceded the theatre by nine hours. What fond recollections we all have of the late Julie Glenn, who started this programme on the 1st of May 1950, of Nan Fletcher who took over from Julie and arranged and presented Women's Forum until a few years ago. And now, of course, the incomparable Elwyn is not only at the helm of the Forum... You're mixing your metaphors, Meryl. This is not a ship, it's a forum for ladies. Yes, but all ships are she, aren't they? Another lady of the airwaves who has supplied programmes of a high interest value over many years is Joy Anderson founder producer of Tonight and Top Level. Yes, Joy has certainly enjoyed being mistress of ceremonies of these two programmes. Yes, Peter, Tonight is 22 years old this year and Top Level 16 years. A lot of years to have been meeting and interviewing literally thousands of people from all walks of life. I must say I enjoy my job tremendously, though it's often exhausting and sometimes quite nerve-wracking. Going back to October 1953, when the Tonight programme, known as In Town Tonight in those days, first took the air, we had famous cricketer Dennis Compton on the programme, together with a Johannesburg woman whose pet hen had laid the biggest egg ever produced in South Africa. I've interviewed most of the top fashion designers, people like Norman Hartnell, Balmain, Hardy Amis. Mr Amis speaks very well, but he has a habit of not finishing off the ends of his words very clearly. Now, I usually play back interviews to the people concerned, and Hardy Amys had been describing the fabulous wardrobe he'd designed for Queen Elizabeth for her state visit to Paris. One special gown was the pièce de résistance, and describing it, he said, The Queen looked absolutely superb, causing oohs and ahs from the crowd as she emerged from the Louvre. Unfortunately, as I said previously, he had this habit of swallowing the last letters of his words, and out came clearly as she emerged from the loo. The stories are so many connected with the two programmes, Tonight and Top Level, that I could talk for hours about them. But time's up. Thank you, Peter. And thank you, Springbok Radio. It's good to be part of a great team. As opdracht van die groot stemme uit Springbokse verlede en here Dierfoort. Stanader Steve, Steve de Villiers, the SI cast is going to the radio program. But for us of Springbok Radio, play is Steve. The man with his name on so many successful programs gekoppeld was. And, uh, can I say, our first really two-talige stem on Springbok. And it's not say Steve. Now, Dana, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I will just say, very happy by the 25th year. Hey, it's a great moment here. As we've talked about the two-talige, two-talige stem of Springbok, here we are in the last one, what was that two-talige program in name, Steve? I think he verwijst now to Eldorado, the Skattejag, on the Saturday morning. How did that program again in each other stick? No, we had to look at all the interesting examples, such as, for example, a blonde hair. I remember me, we had so a big pack of them and two beautiful gold hair locks that were cut off and cut off to our own blonde hair and our own. And then, I think, Steve, that our beautiful one with the other reeks, was it? What was it? Something with Jukskei Reels to do? Can you understand? Yeah, Buig of Bars. Buig of Bars. But, Steve, there is another person with whom you have very long time worked. Dana, I think there are two of them here. Yeah. En hulle sit hier in die gehoor, en ek dink ons kan gerus hulle naam er noem nou, en hulle naderwink, Esme Everard en Jan Groje. En hier is hulle by ons. Vandag ken jy almal vir hierdie twee as die slim raadgevende paar vir die huisvrouw is. Die twee wat vir hulle kan vertel... So maak, mens. Esmee, hoe lang is jy en Jan al hiermee bezig? 
O, Steve, nou vraag jy, jong, so wat 17 jaar, denk ek, van 1958 af. En jylle twee het seker ook al snaakse dinge belewe met die program, nie waar nie, Jan? Ja, Steve, ons het baie dinge belewe. Is my praat so van 17 jaar, maar jy weet, 17 jaar beteken eindelijk dat ons vandag die 4265ste uitsending van So Maak Mens beleef het. En dit beteken eindelijk 4265 recepte, en ek werk het uit as 16.000 wenke en oor die 5.000 grappies, of die sogenaamde nagerechies. Dan, dier alle jare is daar die uitstaande ding, en dit is die wonderlijke vriendskap van ons luisteraars. En vir my en vir Esmee, wat oor hierdie 17 jaar met soveel vreugde deelgeneem met hierdie program, hoop ons dat die vriendskap verder sal opbouw en nog baie lang sal voordier. Is my, jy is een goeie vernoot. Baie dankie Jan en ek stem saam met wat jy gesê. En baie dankie julle twee, dit is een prachtige verhaal, hierdie verhaal van So Maak Mens. Maar lang voordat is my en Jan u geleer het, hoe om die kinders en die manse probleem in die hoofd te bied, was hulle natuurlijk die eerste twee groot minnaars van die Afrikaanse vervolgverhaal op Springbok Radio. Hulle was Marie van Eden en Pierre Basson van Liefdeslied. En dis hier waar ons elke dag saam gewerk het. Dis reg, ja. En Steve, wel, ek het die kenwysie van Liefdeslied en Weile Brahmetinus en sy vrou Minnie het vir ons een oud tekst gegeen. Kom, wees jy nou weer eens die verteller en ons voer hulle terug na 1953 toe. En nou, liefdeslied, die eerste dagelijkse Afrikaanse vervolgverhaal in die wereld. Met elke voorbijgaande dag word het al hoe duideliker dat om Jan miskien nooit weer opgespoor sal word nie. En die toestand word vir Peer en sy wederwee moeder haas ondraaglik. Hulle enigste getrouwe vriendin was tot dusver Marie van Eden. En sy doen alles in haar vermoe om hulle by te staan en om hulle opgeruim te probeer hou in die moeilike tykie wat hulle doormaak. Maar Peer begryp nie haar vriendskap met besoekende journalist Chris nie. En in ruklank het hulle twee vervreemd geraak. Dis al tien uur en skielik gewaar Marie vir Peer in die tuin. Sy stap buiten toe. Kijk hier Peer Basson, Ek word nou bykie sap vir al hierdie onsin wat jy gedierig loop en verkoop. Mama Marie, luister my op my. Jy weet glad nie eers alles wat daar is om te weet nie. En dan kom jy gedierig tot al hierdie verskotte gevolg trekkings. Ma Marie, ek sê nou vir jou, dit is nie... Jy word een rechte ou sierknol, dis wat met jou gebeur. Ek kan jou verseker dat ek absoluut niks daarvan hou nie. Is dit so? Dit is so, ja. Nou, toe maar Marie. Jy hoef nie so kwaad te word nie, hoor. Sien jy nou wat jy gedoen? Maar jy meer laat verloor. Ek is jammer. Maar jy behoort te wees... Wil jy her dat ek huis toe moet gaan? Nee. Marie, ek het jou lief. Wat? Ek het gesê, dit is een lieflike aand vanuit. Peer, jy het nie. Ja, ek het. Ach, toe, kom Peer, sê my wat jy gesê het. Maar ek sê jy, moes ek het niks gesê nie, Marie. Ach, nou goed dan, meneer grapmaker. Weet jy wat, Marie? Ek voel nou soveel beter vandag. Ek stel glad nie belang nie. Hoekom voel ek elke keer so gelukkig nadat ons gestrui het, he? Peer? Wat, Marie? Wat het jy nou nou gesê? Jy het my goed genoeg gehoor. Ja, maar ek wil nie daarvan seker maak. Ek herhaal nooit iets nie. O, jou, jou vaarbond, die maak my so kwaad. Wow, wacht, wow, Marie, wacht, wacht, wacht. Hier is die enigste twee oore wat ek het, hoor. Maar jy, jy behoort jou te skaam om my arme, weerloose ou meisiekie so te terg. Ja, nogal besonder weerloos, soos een slagskip. Kom, kom ons gaan stap uit, bykie verder. Ons wonder hoe dit nou sal gaan met Peer en Marie'se liefdesverhouding. Of vriende, onthou jy nog dat alles gelukkig geëindig het. Yes, very touching. Esme, Jan and Steve, very touching. How well I remember the days in that little studio up the road. 
And after all that misunderstanding and reuniting, I think some cheerful music by Dan Hill is called for. <laughs> 